Auschwitz was an awful place to be pregnant, unprecedented horrific crimes against humanity were committed during World War II. One of the biggest question is, how did women actually deal with pregnancy in those awful concentration camps? The answer is unfortunately one that will make you question humanity. History is replete with tales of Nazi prisoners of war who, in spite of dire circumstances, risked their lives in order to save those around them. In some cases, the moral conundrum these prisoners faced presented an insurmountable challenge, particularly for those in the medical profession who had taken an oath to save life. One such hero who took a complete risk is Stanislaw Leszczyska. This is History Rediscovered, to support please subscribe. In this episode, we discuss the sad reality of expecting women in concentration camps. Furthermore we discuss the midwife at Auschwitz who delivered 3,000 babies in deadly conditions. Despite being ordered to kill infants, Stanislawa Leszczyska declined. In the Catholic Church, she was a potential saint. We'll talk about how she actually delivered 3,000 babies in camps later in the film. As we are well aware, during the Second World War, the Nazi administration established a complex network of concentration camps to kill people from ethnic groups they considered to be racially inferior, primarily Jewish communities in Eastern Europe. Sadly, women in the camps were sexually assaulted or made to work in camp brothels where they had to be openly sexual with the carpos and guards, prisoners who worked for the Nazis. The fact that Jews were regarded as a low race did not prevent them from being and becoming pregnant. Not all pregnancies were caused by though. Some women arrived at Auschwitz already carrying children. Due to their inability to provide the Third Reich with sufficient forced labor, pregnant women and children were specifically targeted for extermination within the camp system. Few pregnant women live to testify about these crimes, so historians have found it difficult to comprehend how pregnancy and female reproductive health affected women for the entire time they were imprisoned in the concentration camps. But, the results of our additional research will astound you. Pregnancy increased the likelihood that women would be subjected to mind-bogglingly heinous cruel experimentation and extermination, but it also caused physical deterioration in the bodies of pregnant women within the camp system, which concealed many of their pregnancies during subsequent selections and increased the number of secret terminations carried out by inmates, despite dangerously unsanitary conditions. Infanticides committed after giving birth since it was the only way to avoid being put to death. Inauspicious sanitary conditions and starvation caused many of the women who gave birth at Auschwitz to pass away very quickly. Several ladies were sent straight to the gas chamber after giving delivery. They moved towards gas chambers while holding the hopeless infants close to their chest. It would not be humanitarian to send a child to the ovens without permitting the mother to be there to witness the child's death. That is why I send the mother and child to the gas ovens together says, Joseph Mengel, a sadistic Nazi doctor from Auschwitz. But it was, owing to a woman by the name of Stanislawa Leszczyska. The Polish midwife delivered 3,000 infants at the camp during her two years of imprisonment at Auschwitz under appalling circumstances. Despite the fact that her tale is poorly known outside of Poland, it serves as a monument to the resistance of a few women who were adamant about helping their fellow captives. The reason Leszczyska ended up in Auschwitz in the first place was her desire to aid others. She was born in Lodz in 1896, and her early years were relatively peaceful. During this time, she got married, pursued her midwifery license, and had kids. When the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, everything changed. The second largest concentration of Jews in Poland was suddenly located in Leszczyska's city, which also happened to be under occupation. The Nazis crammed more than one-third of the city's residents into a small space and had them work for them. Leszczyska and her family, which included her four children, decided to provide a hand after being horrified by the conditions in the ghetto. As a part of the expanding Polish resistance, they transported phony documents and food to Jews inside the ghetto. The family's job was uncovered in 1943, and the Gestapo questioned them. The smaller children and their mother were detained, but Leszczyska's husband and oldest son were able to flee. Leszczyska was transferred to Auschwitz with her daughter, a medical student, and was separated from her boys, who were sent to various camps to perform forced work. When Leszczyska arrived at the camp, she located a German physician and introduced herself as a midwife. He gave her a job in the maternity ward of the camp, a collection of filthy barracks that served less as a place to care for expectant mothers than as a place to lead them into death. At Auschwitz, most pregnant women were simply transported to the death chambers. Gisela Pearl, a doctor who assisted in stopping hundreds of pregnancies, occasionally provided terminations to women who discovered they were pregnant at the camp. When pregnant women were found, they were frequently summarily executed. Several women were transported to a hospital barracks to finish their pregnancies in appalling conditions. The barracks were overseen by Sister Clara, a midwife who had been detained at the camp after killing a child. In front of the moms who had just given birth, 
they were in charge of declaring newborns in the hospital stillborn and then drowning them in buckets. It was not Sister Clara's job to help with deliveries. This division of labor was one of the most disgusting instances of the Nazis' cynical adherence to legal standards. On the one hand by forbidding the nurse with a suspended license from assisting in childbirths while, on the other, using her to murder newborn Jewish babies. Leschiska rejected after learning what was expected of her in the grisly maternity unit. She once more resisted being escorted to the camp's medical director. Nobody is sure why they didn't murder her back then. Leschiska just started seeing to mothers and giving birth to their infants, despite Clara's threats and abuse. While she was aware that the majority of the kids she delivered would perish within a few hours, she made an effort to preserve as many of the mothers' lives as she could. No running water, few blankets, no diapers, and limited food made it almost impossible to work. Leschiska immediately figured out that the only area that could fit a laboring woman was to have her lie on the infrequently lighted, brick stove in the middle of the barracks. In the hospital, which would swell with inches of water when it rained, illnesses and lice were prevalent. Leschiska later said that during her two years at Auschwitz, she delivered 3,000 babies with the help of her daughter and other prisoners. Despite several requests to do so, she persisted in refusing to kill infants, even defying Dr. Joseph Mengel, the camp's infamous angel of death, who was known for his cruel experiments on twins and other prisoners. Not all infants were promptly killed, beginning in 1943. Some were abducted as part of Nazi Germany's Lebensborn program, which abducted up to 100,000 infants in Poland alone, to be given to Nazi couples as Aryan children. In the hopes that the newborns would one day be recognized and returned to their mothers, Leszczyska and her helpers did their best to tattoo the abducted infants. Several mothers choose to murder their own children rather than give their children to the Nazis. While some non-Jewish women were permitted to keep their children, the harsh conditions in the camp meant that most of them died shortly after birth. Though it's unknown what happened to them, a few Jewish infants were let to live. If a child was allowed to survive, it was likely to be for a specific reason and for a specified time. As she saw the kids she had delivered being killed or starving to death because their moms were not allowed to breastfeed, Leschiska felt helpless. Yet, she persisted in her work, baptizing newborn Christians and providing the barracks female residents with the greatest care she was able. She went by the moniker, Mother. Among the 3,000 kids that Leschiska gave birth to, around half drowned, 1,000 died shortly from famine or cold, 500 were given to other families, and 30 managed to escape the camp. All of the women and all of the newborns are thought to have made it through childbirth. Early April 1945, the Nazis ordered the majority of Auschwitz prisoners to embark on death marches to other concentration camps. Long after Auschwitz was freed, Leschiska's legacy persisted in the memories of the survivors whose infants she tried to deliver in a dignified manner, the lives of the few kids who escaped the camp, and the work of her own children, all of whom survived the Holocaust and went on to become doctors. In the 1980s, Maria Saloman, whose baby Leschiska delivered, remarked, To this day I do not know at what price, she delivered my baby. Stanislawa Leschiska is responsible for my Liz's survival. Without her in my thoughts, I cry every time after the war, Leschiska settled back into life as a midwife in Lodz and didn't start talking about her time at Auschwitz, until she retired in 1957. In Poland, she is still held in high regard, and the Catholic Church has proposed her for sainthood. But even if she never receives the title of saint, her vital service in a place of eternal torment is enough to merit praise.